Morning folks, Dave here at Thunder Mesa Studio where this week I'm back to work over here on Circle D Ranch. At this point, Circle D Ranch consists of um, Walt's Barn, which was an O-scale kit, limited edition from uh, Crescent Creek Models. Found a nice home for that. And um, this scratch-built log cabin that I did a video on a little while back and I'll, I'll put a link up there for that. And what I want to do now is add a horse corral back over here. You see there's a spur that goes back around and that's the private spur for Mr. Elias Homage here who's uh, president of the Thunder Mesa Railroad and uh, I want to put um, a little uh, horse corral back here so he can load his prize winning horses up onto the stock cars that uh, pull in here from time to time. I also built this uh, Arkansas split rail fence a little while back around the same time as the cabin was built but a horse corral, that has a different kind of construction. So I've already built the, uh, the loading chute. Did that a little while ago. And now I want to build the rest of the horse corral around it. And that is this week's project. Basically, I want to build a, a ranch gate right here uh, to get in and out of the pen. And then uh, fencing that joins up with these uh, rock formations and follows the contour of the track around and then comes down the side of the barn and back around like that. So pretty pretty basic simple fence but uh, you know it ain't going to build itself so let's get started. Now I, I do have a little bit of experience with uh, horses and ranches and gates and things like that but I still wanted to do some research um, to see what the best way uh, to go about this is and um, as usual, uh, that research led to a drawing, and here's the drawing right here. I've uh, glued it up onto some uh, some foam core so I can also use my drawing as a jig to build right on top of. I built this at scale, or I drew this at scale so I could build right on top of it. And basically what we have here is a, a pretty generous uh, gate, which is uh, about 12 feet wide by 12 feet high, plenty of room for a uh, couple of men on horseback uh, to ride through abreast and enough room for this top bar so they won't uh, bonk their head when they go through. Uh, the fence itself should be about uh, 60 inches tall for horses. Seems to be the consensus right in there somewhere around around 60 inches tall. The gate right here is a, is a triangular style gate which is a pretty common design. Believe me, ranch gates come in all different configurations, all different shapes and sizes, but this is a pretty common one. And um, a good question to ask is, should the gate swing outward or inward? Well, I did a little research on that, and the consensus on that is it should swing both ways as much as possible. There's an argument for it swinging out, and there's an argument for it swinging in, but uh, the general opinion should be, if possible, the gate should be able to swing both ways and uh, the latch should be operable from uh, by a man on horseback or a man on the ground, either one. So I've tried to keep all of that in mind while drawing this. And yes, I am going to try to design and build a hinge for this so that it can actually swing both ways. It can open and close in both directions. So. We'll see how that turns out. But the first thing I want to do is build this, this gateway and this triangular gate itself. So let's get started on that. So I'm just going to cut some uh, O-scale 8x8s um, for the gateway here, for both the uprights and the cross piece. And all of the, the posts for the corral all the way around will also be 8x8s. And then I need to cut some 6x6 stock for the gate itself. Get all that cut and distressed and stained up. And we'll be off to the races. Or we'll, be, we'll be off at least. This little trick I learned um, for marking rather than using a pencil. See, because a pencil line is fat. If you want a little bit more precision, I use my hobby knife. Gives me a nice uh, positive line that I can cut and uh, a little bit more precise than a pencil. So I have a better chance, better odds of these coming out the same size. 
Now all of these timbers, um, they've been out in the weather for a while, so I'm going to add a little bit of uh, distress to them. I like to use a razor saw uh, to distress timbers like this, and I just take out, this is a fine tooth razor saw, and just drag it along with the grain. And uh, one way to keep it all look from looking too uniform, see I'm kind of zigzagging back and forth. I'm, I'm twisting a little a little bit as I go to give it to, to give the grain a little bit of curve. Otherwise it can end up looking a little bit too perfect. It's pretty steep. Now I'm cutting this freehand. I want to be able to cut straight down as much as I can on my mark there to make sure that's a good angle. Now on my drawing, I've, I've left a fairly generous gap here between uh, the hinge side of the gate and the post. And that's it because if it's going to swing both ways, uh, you've got to have the room in there to accommodate that. If it was flush up against this post here, it would not be able to swing. I mean, that'd be okay if it was just going to swing out, right? But uh, if it's going to swing both ways, I need a, a good healthy gap in here um, so that hinge has room to pivot. I've got some shoe dye and uh, rubbing alcohol stain already mixed up from a previous project. and See what kind of condition that's in. Yeah, that'll work. You know, just a quick dip, that's really all you need with this. You don't need to soak it in there unless you want it to be really dark. So I have been thinking about how this hinge is gonna work, right? And uh, what I have figured out is I have some, um, some uh, what is this, aluminum tubing very tiny aluminum tubing. I think it is about, looks like about two millimeter. I could tell you precisely if my calipers were working, but they're battery operated and the battery is dead, <clears throat> which is why I will never again <laughs> buy battery powered calipers because when you need them, eh, the battery's dead. Anyway, I don't know what the uh, inside diameter is, but um, this piece of, uh, um, 175 thou uh, music wire slides nicely inside of that. So I'm going to use these to create my hinge, right? So I'm going to cut a piece of this, which is about two scale feet, a half an inch long. Um, and then I'm going to put the wire through and bend it on both sides. So it creates almost like a staple shape. And those protruding wires will go into the gate itself and this part the tube will be well, I'm going to create a little trough in here and I'm going to epoxy that piece of tubing in there and then theoretically the gate should pivot right on there right Let me mark this go. Okay. Don't need this, don't need that, need this and this. So now I need to create just a little shallow notch for, for this to sit in. And then I can, um, then I can glue it in place. I'm also going to paint these pieces too. I'm going to get some paint on there. Kind of a dark, rusty brown, I think. Now I've gone ahead and marked where I need a little trough to begin and end. And um, one of the best ways I've found to do things like this is to take a, a flat file and use the edge. You don't want to go too deep because then it will interfere with the swing of the gate. I just want a place that I can glue this into. Wait, back up. Thinking more about this, it seems like the smarter thing to do would be to put the wire through and bend it first. 
I can cut the length later, right? And then just uh, install the whole thing on there as one unit. Seems like that would be the way to do it. Do some final adjustments later on. All right. Stay nice and loose in there. Excellent. All right, now I'm gonna get some paint on this using some of the old, old uh, Rust-Oleum Camo Dark Brown. My favorite go-to for old metal. Wait, back up one more time. <laughs> okay, well I got this painted, but before I install it on here, the smartest thing to do, I think, would be to build the gate itself, right? And then install this in the gate, line it up with the post, and yeah, and then everything will fit together nicely. It, it takes me a while sometimes to get these things figured out, but I, I, <laughs> I think I've, I've got it figured out now. So I'm gonna put the gate together. I'm gonna use my drawing and create a jig, and I need some packaging tape to put on the top of this so I can glue on top. Okay. Now I'll get some nice pins. I've chamfered one of the ends here, the end where it meets the fence post, because it would be worn down like that. I should not take very long at all. And then the angle brace. Bring it all together. All right. I think we can do this now. Got my hinge. Got the gate. That's okay. And I need to mark where those where the holes are going to be. I need to drill a couple of holes. What a nice tight fit. I'm using a size uh, 71 bit. A little bit smaller in diameter than this wire. Hopefully I can get a nice uh, just press fit on this, uh, on this hinge. Remember you can always make holes bigger. It's much harder to make them smaller. Just about got it. Just about got it in here. All right, I got it in there, but I ended up uh, rubbing <laughs> most of the paint off with my fingers because I didn't let it dry all the way. I was, yeah, I was being impatient, but I kind of like the way it looks. And I call that accidental weathering, you know? <laughs> looks like a little worn out. I'll, I'll touch it up later. So now, I'm mix up some five minute epoxy and carefully attach that onto there. Now I only need a very small amount of this epoxy. I'll try to dispense a small amount. So mix that up. You're going to be really super careful not to get this into the, uh, the working part of the hinge. You know what I mean? So I only want it on the barrel and not on the pins. But at the same time, a fairly generous amount on the barrel so that I so that it actually sticks. Put that aside. And it needs to prop this up level. A little scrap of something, something. There we go. into the slot it goes. And now we wait. Well, it's been a minute or two. Um, I don't want to mess with this too much. The, the epoxy has set up, but I, I really want to give it a chance to cure completely, probably overnight, before I monkey around with this too much. But I just, want, I just can't resist testing to see, ah, look at that, look at that, 
I'll, I'll, I'll take it. That's a success. Now I can finish building the rest of the the ranch gate or the uh, the, uh, the gateway, the archway here. Put those pieces together. I also have a little stop here that the gate would sit on. Um, I need to figure out a way to latch the gate. So I think I'm going to just put a peg in the top of this and um, I'm going to secure it closed with a piece of rope that can be a loop of rope that can be removed from either either side of the gate and by uh, a person on horseback or a person on foot. So I just need to figure out what to use for a peg. Hmm. I bet this toothpick will work. Something like it. Yes, that would work nicely, I think. Ooh, on the end of this, ram it right through. Then when that's dry, I'll, uh, I'll clip it off and get some stain on there. Now I think I can put the rest of the gate together. Okay, well the gate is pretty much finished. Uh, I added some um, diagonal bracing up here at the top with some one by eights just to make it you know a little bit stronger. I also added a couple of uh, pins to uh, help locate the gate uh, over uh, where the corral is going to go. Um, it's foam over there on Circle D Ranch except for the base of the the, uh, the barn itself. It's foam uh, covered with uh, sanded grout and some real dirt sprinkled on top. So these will just poke right down through that foam and uh, hold the gate upright while I'm building the rest of the fencing around it. Right now, I want to add the rope. It's going to be used to uh, hold the corral shut. I just got some, this is some number 10 crochet thread and I've colored uh, a few inches of it here, a darker brown with a sharpie. Let me grab some CA. Just want to put a dab right here so I can start this. And I'm going to take it just to cut this off right here so I can work with it. Wrap this around a couple of times. And then I'll leave a larger loop that can go over that peg that. Uh, we put in there. And we can loop it through here and through there. Tie it off. Now I like to put a little CA to harden that knot. I'll get some brown paint and touch up that hinge. I'll get back in there with some chalk. Add some dark brown and some orange. Simulate rust. It does a really nice job of tying it all together. We should be able to get it in here right about here. Just like that. All right. The gate is in. Just need to build the rest of the corral. Now before I start building the corral fence, I just wanted to take a minute to talk about the other key component in this scene, and that is this loading chute. Um, I built this a while ago, uh, and unfortunately I did not film the build, but I did uh, photograph it, so I'll, I'll throw some slides up there while I'm talking about this. But it's basically built in, in the same way, uh, with the same techniques as, uh, as the gate I just did. It's a uh, scale, O scale lumber, uh, uh, eight by eights uh, for the uprights, and then some coffee stir sticks for the planks. And that's about it. That's got some nice little details like some nut bolt washer castings and uh, this little horseshoe 
up here on the top, which is laser cut. I really like that. Now I know you horse people out there, a lot of you are saying, why would they have a loading chute in a horse corral? Well, play along with me here, all right? <laughs> um, this particular horse corral belongs to Elias Omage, who is the president of the Thunder Mesa Mining Company Railroad, and um, he, he has he's the owner of Circle D Ranch, and he has his own private spur that comes out uh, to his uh, barn. And he likes to, uh, you know, go riding in the country sometimes. And sometimes he likes to transport his horses uh, on his railroad. So he has a loading chute dedicated to that purpose at the back of the horse corral. So that's the whole backstory on that. That said, uh, where I originally had it in the scene was a little bit too far over to the left, so I moved it further. I'm going to move it further over to the right so it's more visible and makes a little bit more sense in the scene. And we'll still line up with a standard uh, Bachman uh, stock car. Well, now I'm ready to start on the, um, the sections of corral fence. Um, and I'm using the same uh, drawing. As, as, a, as a building jig template that I used for the gate. I drew a little section of fence down here. And I want to build it in eight foot sections uh, like this. And the uprights are, uh, are scale eight by eights. And the cross pieces are, are actually copy stir sticks, but they're not the ones I usually use. These were sent to me by a friend of the channel. And they're a little more um, petite than the ones I usually use. These are about a scale uh, two inches, about scale two inches by about nine inches. They vary a lot, which I like, um, you know, uh, but and I'm sorry, I don't remember who sent them to me. And if you're out there watching, uh, let me know so I can give you a shout out. And I'm very, I'm, I'm very sorry that I forgot. And I want to thank you uh, for sending them to me because I found them very, very handy. In fact, I'd like to know where you got them. Um, that said, let's start in building this. And the important thing to remember with livestock fencing like this, be it horses or cows or whatever, is that the posts go on the outside, right? And the reason for that is that if the animal leans up against the fence, the boards don't just pop out, <laughs> right? Because the animals are heavy. So I'm building this actually from the inside and it'll be flipped over. So just quickly get this first eight foot section done. Now this first section is a full section of fence with two posts and the next one will be a half section. So it'll just be one post and the three rails coming out. By the way, this is what's known as a three rail fence. Very, very common out here in the West. You just need to make it tall enough so that the horses can't jump over it. And that's usually measured up to, you know, their withers, you know, they're usually about 60 inches is, is a good rule of thumb on that. I think we can pop this out of here. go. I've got a little nail in my pin vise. Put some nail holes. Just a nice detail that's very easy to add. I notice this, these boards don't come all the way to the end and that's because the next slats, the next three slats, are going to overlap right there. Well, the glue is dry in one of the half sections I was just talking about, so now you can see how they go together, just like that. Um, I just want to show you one little detail here. See how this is kind of cut away, these scalloped... Uh, I did that with a hobby knife, made these uh, scalloped indentations in the top. And that is something known as cribbing, which is often seen on horse corrals. Sometimes when horses get bored, they will chew on the wood and create these scallop-shaped indentations. So, you know, I don't want my horses to be bored, but uh, it's a cool detail to include nonetheless. Now, to build the rest of this fence, 
I'm going to have to go back and forth several times between the workbench and the layout over there and uh, just to make sure everything is fitting properly and to figure out the number of panels that I'm going to need. But I've got a pretty good idea, so I've stained up a bunch of uh, wood and uh, posts and planks to get started. This is kind of a tough spot to uh, work in and an even harder area to get good video of, so I hope you can see what I'm doing back here using some Eileen's Tacky Glue to hold it in place. This one I want to be kind of parallel with the line. And make sure these uh, fence posts sit level. I'm actually digging down into the sanded grout a little bit, which I used for ground cover here, and uh, glued into place and painted with a thin wash of uh, latex paint that matches the rest of the scenery. I dig down a little bit, I can actually create sort of a post hole. So on the surfaces where it's making contact with the fence post, I'm using uh, wood glue. And where it connects to the layout itself, to the scenery, I like to use uh, a little Eileen's Tacky Glue on there. Okay, now I need to take the fence back over here to this rock formation, which is actually going to form part of the enclosure. Well, I think the corral itself is uh, pretty much done. You can see back here how I solved the problem of uh, bringing the fence up to the rock formation. Since it's uh, theoretically soft sandstone, you could, you could hammer uh, hammer poles right into the rocks. So that's what we did here. Now, a couple other little details I want to add. There needs to be a, a source of water and probably a, uh, a snub post in here somewhere for uh, reluctant horses that don't necessarily want to be bridled and ridden. Now, a, a snubbing post or snub post uh, is basically just a pole, often round, uh, near the center of a round pen or corral that's used for training horses. And uh, the idea is you, you bring the horse over and you, you snub him up, you tie him up to this post so he, can, you know, he can't move around too much. And it's, it's used for, for uh, getting horses used to uh, the saddle and the bridle and all that kind of stuff like that. Anyway, uh, I've chosen to model a round one, and I've used a 3 16th of an inch dowel. Uh, put a length of dress pin in the bottom so I can put it down into the foam. And an important detail, I've taken and sanded a little bit of a notch. I don't know if you can see that. Just where it's been worn away from the rope being tied around it over and over again and the horse pulling back on the rope and so you know just a little detail that most people won't notice but uh horse people will well, back in the old days before the time of galvanized steel tubs that we use today in ranching um Water troughs for horses were often made of wood. Uh, if you've watched any old Western movies, you've you know you've seen these along the side of the street, in front of the saloon where the you know the hero or the villain ties up his horse. There's a, usually a water trough, and um, they were basically just uh, wooden boxes that were uh, you know caulked, were made out of boards, and then caulked. Uh, to hold water like like a canoe. 
So that's what I'm going to attempt to make here. I've got some um, some scribed um, 1 32nd of an inch thick basswood from my uh, my scrap box, and I'm going to use that to uh, model a uh, wooden water trough. Oh, one of these pieces needs to be the floor. All the same, so I guess it doesn't matter. It's a uh, be two feet high, about six feet long, and uh, two feet wide or deep. So pretty basic. One thing I can't stress enough on all of these things, uh, the corral, the gate, all of it, <clears throat> these things were not built by professional carpenters. <laughs> They're built by uh, ranch hands, uh, cowboys, things like that. So if some of the angles are a little cattywampus, that's okay. That uh, just adds authenticity to a model like this. Now I can just... Uh, Cap these corners with some scale one by four. There, I think that'll work. Now for the water, got something else planned. Um, I put a block in here. This is some uh, one quarter inch square stock uh, inside, and that is to raise up the level of the water, which is actually going to be made from a piece of clear acetate. Well, it was clear until I painted it a murky, swampy green on the back. I don't know about you, but I've never seen a horse trough, a horse trough where the water uh, looked clean. So now, I cut this to the right size, so what I should be able to do, glue it in here with the shiny side up, and it should do a pretty good job of Simulating the look of water. I don't want to use CA. Where is my Eileen's tacky glue? Put a little smear of that in there. And yeah, let's see now. This is the shiny side. Yes. Okay. Should be able to just press this down in there. There we go. Now, um. I'm going to use some watercolors, my favorite uh, burnt sienna and cobalt blue mixture. Because, you know, even though these things are cocked, they are made of wood and uh, they are going to leak. So let's find the, the board line here. I'm going to put some uh, water streaks down the side. I'm going to do one side because only one side is going to be uh, visible, really. So I'm just going to glue it in place right over here by the fence. It would be relatively easy for the people working on the ranch to refill. And if you're wondering uh, where the water comes from for the trough, <laughs> this is the 19th century. There's a creek right over there. I haven't poured the water in it yet, but eventually there will be a creek over there. And so they would take buckets and just bring it right over. Just the same way they get uh, water to the house. Now something you will not find in a horse corral that's uh, currently in use by actual horses is grass and weeds. And that is because a horse will eat absolutely everything that they can reach. And they'll go, they'll go through the fence with their head and, and get grass and weeds. But um, just beyond their reach, they will grow. So I want to put some, uh, some clumps of grass and weeds around the perimeter of the corral, but none inside. And I'm just using some, uh, silver tufts, silver, it's hard to say, silver tufts from Scenic Express. Now this is just some of my uh, uh, dark, dark, dark brown acrylic stain. It's almost black. 
this is what I use to uh, darken the scenery when I'm doing the rock work, but I'm also going to use it right now to add some stains around inside the corral because, you know, horses make messes. First, I want to put some by the uh, water trough. Perhaps some water has leaked out. Just a few random spots here and there. That'll all dry a shade lighter than that. So I think that's pretty good. Now there is something I almost forgot. And you horse people out there, you probably know what it is. <laughs> yeah, it's a gate for this loading chute. In order to prevent any unscheduled departures from the corral, just made up a little triangular gate to kind of match the one on the front of the corral. That one's not operable though. Doesn't really need to operate. And that will do it for the corral. I think that's it. Let's see. Am I missing anything else? Oh! Ah. Horses. Gotta have some horses in here. These guys are, I can't really remember where I got these. I, I don't know what the manufacturer is. I think this one came from a package of toys. I got it on eBay. And uh, this other one, uh, that one, this, uh, that's a, this is some tooling that's been around forever. Not the greatest sculpt in the world, but you know, you can paint them up to look okay. Yeah, um, eventually I want to add more horses to the corral. Uh, Aspen Modeling Company makes some of the best uh, O-scale horses that uh, money can buy anywhere. Beautiful sculpts and um, both uh, saddle horses, unsaddled, uh, draft horses, you name it. Uh, and you can get those. So I'm probably get a few more of those for the corral. It's not a very big corral, so maybe five horses tops in there. Oh, one more thing. The gate works great. Open it up just like that. And yes, it does swing in both directions. Black horse out of the way. Very happy with the way that turned out. Thank you for joining me for that build of the Circle D Ranch Horse Corral. Don't forget to hit like and subscribe if you want to see more of this kind of thing. You can also follow Thunder Mesa over on Instagram at thunder.mesa or check out the Thunder Mesa Studio website. That's thundermesa.studio. Or if you really like what we're doing here and want to show your support, you can head on over to patreon.com slash thundermesa like these nice folks did and show your support there. Until next time, keep moving forward, everybody, and adios for now.